glad to welcome you to this program coming to you from Deliverance Church International based at Kawash behind Goodika Estate. We are based along Kondele Kibos Road, you branch off at Kawash, Living Stream Center. My name is Bishop Felicia Odoch. I'm the senior pastor here and I'm glad to come to you to the comfort of your house, your room, or wherever you are listening, to share with you the Word of God. A few couple of days, we began a series on the family. We were sharing about the family and the values of the family. And when we ended our last series, we said we will tackle the issue of family altar. And today, I want to share with you Family altar is key to spiritual development. Family altar is very important in the life of anybody. I then want to read our anchor passage from the book of Deuteronomy 11. Deuteronomy 11, we are reading from verse number 18. Therefore, you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul and bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children, speaking of them when you sit in your house, when you walk in the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall write them in the doorpost of your house and in your gates, that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land which the Lord saw to your fathers to give them like the days of the heavens above the earth. The Lord bless the reading of his word. I want you to know that God established the family. The first institution God established was the home and the family. God values the family. The book of Psalm 68, the Bible says he put singles in families. God put singles in family which means God values the family, my dear listener and viewer. And I want you to know if you belong to a family, you are at the heartbeat of God. You belong to something that God established and God watches and God wants to prosper. But it's important to remind you that it, uh, you must have some connection with God. You must have a rallying point to connect with God. And this connection point is the family. In the divine order of creation, families are the production of factories for the society. Whatever we produce in our homes and what societies will become in the coming years. There could be complaint in society today, but the challenge may not even be with the children outside there. The children could be in the home. As somebody once said, that delinquent parents raise delinquent children. Family is important. If we love our country, if we love our nation, if we, if we love our institutions, the success, the beauty, the harmony, the peace in these places will come from the family. How is it with your family? How is it with your home? Beloved, it is important. The most important thing that I want to introduce you to, the most important work that God wants you to do is to develop a happy family, to develop a home where godliness is established. This means much in the heart of the Creator. And my friend, I want you to know that that which goes on in life is within your home. What will reflect out there is what has taken place in your home, in your life. It is therefore important for me to remind you that we need to raise a godly family. We need to raise a godly family with your spouse. It is essential that you create a culture that supports and establishes spirituality and God consciousness in everything you do as a family. This is very important. As a family, 
that you raise a God consciousness in your home and your family, and this will shape society. So today, as we share the word of the Lord, I want to introduce you to what is called the family altar. I want to introduce you to what I call family altar. And you want to know that the altar is a place of worship. The family altar is important. Altars are where we encounter God. Altars are where we have connect with him in a deeper level. That is why Second Chronicles 7, 14 talks of if people, if I shut the heavens and there is no rain, like now there's no rain, the rallying point is the altar. God says at the dedication of the temple by Solomon, that if a people called by my name shall humble themselves, turn from their evil ways, and seek my face. Where? In this house. He was referring to the temple that Solomon had built and had established an altar. And God was saying when people come to that altar to pray, there will be a turnaround. We need to pray in our, our churches and our temples. Believers need to gather in these temples and cry to God. Live alone the Sunday service. People need to call deliberate prayers on weekdays. Gather at the altars, one hour, 30 minutes in the evenings. And let's pray and repent of the sins of our nation and ask God to send rain in our land. And the drought that is affecting us will be changed. An altar is a place of sacrifice. It's a place of sacrifice. People take sacrifice there. It is a place of a power point to draw spiritual and supernatural strength. A power point to draw spiritual and supernatural strength as we see in the book of Genesis, chapter number 8, verse 20 and verse 21. An altar is a place of sacrifice. It's a place of drawing spiritual strength Yes, and supernatural strength. This takes place at the altar. In Genesis chapter number 8, if you don't mind, read with me. In Genesis chapter number 8, we read about this story. In verse 20 and 21, the Bible tells us, When then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and took of every clean animal, and of every clean bird and different burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelt a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again cast the ground for man's sake, although the imagination of man's heart is evil from the youth, nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. You can see the power of what goes on at the altar. And because of this altar, Jehovah was able, Noah raised an altar. And because Noah raised an altar, Jehovah was able to do something. He made a declaration because of the sacrifice that Noah altar offered. Altars are places of, of separation where we separate ourselves to God and separate from curses and generational traits. When you develop an altar, it is a place of separation. And that is why it is important to develop a family altar. You need an altar in the family. When you go to church, there is an altar service by the priest who is the pastor in charge there. But in your home, the man is the head of the family according to the teaching of the word of the Lord. If it is a single family, it is the mother of the house that is the head of the family, is the head of the home, you become in charge of that altar. And there must be an established altar in every home. Every genuine child of God must have a personal prayer altar. And every genuine Christian family, every genuine family must have a corporate uh, altar uh, as a lifestyle. Do you have an altar in your home? Do you gather your family members before dinner or after dinner and sit together to share the word of the Lord, to share the experiences of the day, to give thanks, share thanksgiving at the altar, sing together. You could sing from the hymn, 
hymn book, you could sing from, uh, offer the spiritual choruses in your own language and just worship God together before you disperse to go to bed. How do people disperse to go to bed in your home? Family altars are altars raised up to pray for the family. It is an altar raised to pray for the family. Your family altar is raised up specifically to pray for the needs of your family, of your relatives, your friends, your church, and your community. You can pray for the needs of others around you in your family altar or as directed by God. Like right now, we expect everybody even in their family altar to be praying for rain in this country. Altars and what we do there have the power to shape. Listen to this, friend. Altars and what we do there at the altar have power to shape the destiny of our families. The destiny of your family is not rested on the performance of your children in school alone. It is not rested on the, the how much you have invested. The destiny of your family, the blessings of the investment you have, my friend, is directly connected with the altar you have raised in your life. You must raise an altar. This is the will of God that you raise an altar, and this will shape the destiny of the family. The family altar is placed it's a place to prophesy. You speak in the life of your family members. You speak on the life of your children. You speak in the life of your spouse. You release them into their prophetic destinies in life as done for Rebecca by her family members. Look at what they tell Rebecca before she's released to go to be married by Isaac in Genesis 24. Genesis 24, we read verse 58 to 60 and see the words these people release on Rebecca before they release her to go to be married by Asak. The family members speak to, to Rebecca. And what do they say to her? As we see in this scripture, verse 58 says, So they sent away Rebecca, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, Our sister, may you become the mother of thousands of ten of thousands. And may your descendants possess the gates of those who hate them. Are you hearing the words being spoken? Rebecca is not yet married. She's still a single woman. But you see there is a prophetic utterance released upon her, not in the church. It is being released at home. It is being released on her life by her family members at the family altar before they release her to go out to be married. Therefore, the family altar is a place where prophetic utterances are released upon the members of the family. Deliverance from evil, deliverance from oppression, deliverance from addictions, and salvation of loved ones occurs at the family altar. Therefore, friends, take it from me raise an altar in your family it is very important to raise a family altars if our altars are not activated we hardly achieve the purposes of god for our lives and our families we hardly achieve the purposes of god and our families i'm talking to you on the importance of the altar as a way of shaping destiny of the importance of the family altar and for spiritual development I'm talking to you on the importance of raising an altar. Let's see in 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 7, 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 2 to 10. 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 2 to 10, we read the word of the Lord. 1 Samuel chapter 7, friend, if you can turn with me, if you have a Bible in your home where you're reading, you can read there, 1 Samuel chapter number 7, we are looking at verse 2 to 10. Glory be to God. I remind you, you need to have a family altar. My friend, pray with the members of your family. Sit together at the table with the members of your family. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter number 7, verse 2 to 10, so, so it was that the ark remained in Kirjath Jerim a long time, 
It was there 20 years, and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. They lamented after the Lord. Then Samuel spoke to all the house of Israel, saying, If you return to the Lord with all your hearts uh, and put away the foreign gods and the Asherites uh, from among you and prepare your hearts for the Lord and serve him only, and he will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines. So the children of Israel put away the Baals and the Asherites and served the Lord only. Yes, and verse number 5 says, And Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray to the Lord for you. So they gathered together at Mizpah, drew water, and poured it out before the Lord. And they fasted that day and said there, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel at Mizpah. Now when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel had gathered together at Mizpah, the, the, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard of it, they were afraid of the Philistines. So the children of Israel, listen to this, the children of Israel said to Samuel, Do not cease to cry out to the Lord our God for us, that he may save us from the hand of the Philistines. This Samuel is the priest. There are things you tell your pastor to stand with you in prayer. There are things you appeal to your priest to stand with you before God. And this is what the children of Israel are doing. They are appealing to their priests to pray for them. And Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. Then Samuel cried out to the Lord for Israel, uh, for Israel, and the Lord answered him. The Lord answered him. He still answers his priests. He still answers his servants, the prayers of his servant. Friend, there are certain things you must share with your pastor. You must share with your priest to stand with you in prayer. You can't face certain battles alone. You need reinforcement of your man of God. Now Samuel, listen to this, verse number 10. Now Samuel was offering up the burnt offering to the Philistines. The Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. What happened? But the Lord thundered with a loud thunder upon the Philistines that day and so confused them that they overcome before Israel. They were overcome before Israel. Family altars are therefore important in shaping destinies of families, as I've already told you. Very important in shaping the destinies of families, as we have already seen. We have seen in Genesis 24. Genesis 24, verse number 60. We can read again. Genesis 4, 26. Friend, it is important to value family altar. Just be patient with me. Uh, you need a family altar. You need to value your family altar. And the Bible says in Genesis 24, verse number 6, Then Rebekah and her maids arose, and they rode on the camels and followed the man. So the servant took Rebekah and departed. Praise be to God. The destiny. This is beginning a journey of destiny. This is the destiny that is going to result in the birth of, of the, the Esau and the Jacob. And it all begins at the family. It is important to value the place of the family altar. How to run a family altar? How do you run a family altar? You can start by dedicating rooms. Start by de dedicating a room. If you have a one room, you can put a table or a stool. And at the center of that table or stool where you sit, that is where you raise the altar. You dedicate that spot in your home for the spiritual significance and the destiny of your family. Yes, you can do that. You can see in Second First Chronicles, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 16. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 16, the Bible says something that we need to pick. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse number 16. Glory be to God. Glory be to God most high. The family altar is important to you, my friend. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 16. What does the Bible say? It says, For now I have chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, 
and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. This is what God says when you dedicate a spot in your house, when you dedicate a particular place in your, your home to be a place where the family meets for prayer, the family meets to worship God, the family meets to, to give thanks to God. You dedicate it and say every evening after dinner or before dinner we will sit at the table, we will sit around this corner, we will sit in that room and we will worship the Lord, we will share prayer needs, we will share thanksgiving. Friend, once you dedicate this particular spot, you put the TV off, you put the radio off, everybody becomes quiet, people have eaten, you settle down. This is a place of the family altar. I encourage you, raise a family altar in your home. The prayers you make with your wife in bed are not a family altar, that is a couple's prayer. The prayers you do at a corner alone is okay, but is there a place where you gather the family to pray together. The Lord is speaking very clearly in this book passage of Second Chronicles when Paul Solomon had dedicated the temple. Yes, there was a particular place and it says, my ears will be alert to the prayers of Adia. My eyes will be looking at this spot to see whether there's some prayers coming up, whether there are people gathered here in reverence of my name. My eyes will be looking. This is why you need to be careful when you go to church. The eyes of the Lord look at the place of worship. You in, come to reverence God. You don't come to church to chat, to be on Facebook. You're moving around. You're chewing gum in church. Shame on you. Stop chewing gum in church. When you come to church, you come to a place where the eyes of God are focused. He says that my heart. Friend, can I read this passage to you again? I want you to pick it. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse number 16. God says, For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever. And my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually, continuously, progressively, consistently, unceasingly. My heart, the heart of God is in his house. This is why Jesus reprimanded re re them during the Bible days when he found a lot of business going on in the house. And he said, my house will be called a house of prayer. Friends. Dedicate a place in your family where you meet regularly to worship God. Where you meet regularly to, 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 to fellowship. Involve everyone in the family at the altar. I'm reminded when my children were younger, now they are scattered, they are not at home. But even now when they come, we meet at the family altar and pray together. Everybody knew that after dinner we would sit at the table for a few minutes and we'd pray together, we'd sing together, we'd share scripture, we'd ask people to share prayer needs and also thanksgiving. And the, by the grace of God, he helped us to do continuously to the extent that even when I was away, my wife would carry it. And even when they were alone, when we were going on a mission with my wife, we'd still instruct them and ask whoever will be in charge. So and so will read the prayers. So I'll show you we'll lead the service. And they did it by the grace of God. We give God the praise. It is uh, uh, one person, when you come to the family altar, one person can read the scriptures and share the words. One person can lead a song or lead in worship. Hmm? At the meeting, each member is important, even the children. They are very important to participate. In 1 Corinthians 14.26, 1 Corinthians 14.26, the scripture reminds us of some powerful truth here. 1 Corinthians 14.26, something you need to capture here. We need to know that when we come to family altar, every member is important. Don't ignore anybody because we are training everybody. 1 Corinthians 14.26, the scripture tells us what? Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus Most High, 1 Corinthians 14, 26. How is it then, brethren, whenever you come together, each of you as a psalm, as a teaching, as a tongue, as a revelation, as an interpretation, 
let all things be done for edification let all things be done for edification we are not degrading anybody we are not meeting at the family altar to discipline this is not a time for discipline this is not a time now to, to mishandle others or punish others it is a time to grow others to encourage others to motivate them to bring them to god so we need to involve everyone and every member in the family should know what we stand for friends i don't know if you are hearing me i'm talking to you about the altar the family altar do you have a family altar i want to give you a break but i'm speaking to you before you go to church is there a church in your house is there worship in your home is the word of god read in your home have you bought the bible for the family members do you have a few hymn books do you have some choruses you have learned you sing of it do you learn choruses do you allow the holy spirit to give you a chorus to teach the members of your family i came to remind you that as a family you need to have a family altar don't go to bed before you have an encounter with god as family members meet regularly as a family at the dedicated the designated place in your home to have a family altar we are continuing with this teaching next time about the importance of a family altar but for today we have emphasized the importance of the family altar we have said it's a place of sacrifice it is a place of power it is a place of shaping destiny it is a place of giving prophetic utterances upon family members to shape their destiny and we have said it is a designated place it is a place set apart for that reason and we have said it is a place where you come together there is a reading of the scripture there is a sharing of prayer need there is a sharing of thanksgiving we come together and we sing together at the family altar it is a place of training it is a place of transmitting value it is a place of honoring god and if you forget everything i've shared remember the word of the lord in the book of second chronicles chapter 7 verse 16 he says i've chosen this place this place you have called your family altar the church where you go god says i have chosen this place and my name is here my eyes are upon it my ears are attentive to the prayers my heart is perpetually in this place this is how powerful it is my friend that there's a spot in your house where the eyes of the lord look upon family members together there's a spot in your home where god's heart is looking that my people are coming to have fellowship with me now here i want you to reverence god in your home switch off that radio switch off that television put your phone on silence don't pick phone calls during family altar be disciplined value it be serious about it i challenge you today develop a culture of worship to the living god in your home every time raise up the members of your family knowing that there's a fear of god there is a place where we encounter god there is a place where we meet as members of a family to share prayer needs to share thanksgiving to read the word of the lord it is shaping our destiny it is shaping the destiny of our home that is going to give a prophetic word mom is going to make a prophetic prayer for us friend i call on you have a family altar and the destiny of your children even if frustrated by the enemy will be fulfilled and they'll become mighty men and women of god Psalms 112, the generation of the righteous shall be mighty on the land. On those of you who have a family altar, may your generations become mighty. May the Lord bless your children as they come in and they go out. And I pray that your family altar will be active, will be thriving in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I thank you for my viewers. I thank you for the listeners of this teaching. And I pray that as a result of this teaching, we will develop active family altars in our homes. There are those who are already doing it, may your presence continue to abide. There are those who have not yet started, may as a result of this teaching, every family, whether single family, whether complete family of husband and wife, Lord, whether whatever the case, whatever the picture of that family, I pray that as a result of this teaching, 
they'll begin family altars, a place to encounter the presence of God. I thank you that, Father, something is coming out of the family altar and important men and women are being raised that are going to serve in the church, that are going to serve in society because family values, the godly fear, a spiritual legacy was established where they come from at the family altar. Where we have failed, we ask for forgiveness. I thank you and I honor you. I pray for every head of the family that anointing to raise the family altar comes upon them. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. I can't end without asking you to give your life to Christ. You can't have a family altar without a relationship with God. Are you born again? Is your name in the book of life? Have you come to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are your sins washed by the blood of the Lamb? Friend, you are lost without Christ. You are separated from God without Christ. You are dead even though you have a name that you are alive without Christ. You need to give your life to Jesus. If that is your desire, you can say right now, Lord, I come to you as a sinner. I surrender my life to you. Forgive me my sins and restore me to you in Jesus' precious name. If that is your prayer, send me a text. Give me a call. We'll give you counsel. We'll introduce you to church. We'll show you how you can walk in your new fine life. Congratulations for making that decision in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.